welcome honorable guests, parents, teachers, and all my friends to today's session hosted by JP Academia. Power is gained by sharing knowledge, not hoarding it. Thank you for visiting our webinar and we need your support and cooperation throughout the event. Firstly, I request all of you to stay muted throughout the program until asked to. And if you have any queries, please use the chat box. Myself, Alia Burhan, studying in grade nine in UAE. We have gathered here today to present Geoliteracy part three on the topic Math on Earth. Before we start, here's my experience in JP Academia. Here we gain knowledge beyond the syllabus. As you know, we have a particular topic in this meeting. We have researched during the rehearsal and now we have the final presentations. Knowledge is never a waste of time. They help us to deeply understand the topic. After each of our presentations in the rehearsal, guidance from the academicians and even we give feedbacks to each other experience. JP Academia is an initiative of academicians for quality education. It provides a platform for digital learners, especially in this pandemic. I request all of you to stay muted. So now let me wholeheartedly introduce the coordinators of this splendid webinar. Mr. Jay Prasad, sir, former principal and resource person, CPSC, teacher trainer, career counselor, Kerala, India. Mrs. Rakhi Chitnis, ma'am, academic coordinator, teacher trainer, Indoor, India. And Mrs. Parijatam Rajam, ma'am, senior teacher, Gulf Model School, Dubai, UAE. Sir, so is Lisa, ma'am, did Lisa, ma'am, come? No, they didn't enter. Go get with the, uh, mentioning that one and go. Okay. Okay, so we don't have Lisa, ma'am, here. Okay. So I will just so speak she about. Is there. She Sir, come. she has come. Oh. Sir, she has come. Okay. I cordially welcome our beloved guest and assessor, Mrs. Lisa Sahadevan, an elementary teacher from Atlanta for more than 20 years. She is a published author of several educational books. Her works has been cited in many publications geared towards education and parenting. She was recently chosen by the public broadcasting channel in Atlanta to deliver a, a lesson for distant learners. I request Mrs. Lisa to share a few words. Good morning, everyone. Hi. I'm so yeah, excited. We, we have good, good yeah. evening, ma'am. Good, 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 good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Morning. I'm so excited to learn from everyone this morning. I've been looking forward to this all week. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mrs. Lisa. And um, did Devika ma'am arrive? No. no. Okay, so I will go on, I will talk um, about innumeracy. So we can see maths in nature, such as numerical patterns within sunflowers. Some say our universe is literally made out of mathematics in the same way those computer programs are made out of code. Everything we can observe has a mathematical explanation. So what if we don't understand maths? Innumeracy. It refers to one's inability to understand mathematics. Or more simply, innumeracy is mathematical illiteracy. The main problem with innumeracy is the fact that most of the society does not see it as a problem. In fact, many people boast about their innumeracy. Difficulty with mathematics in school is often the first step in perceiving oneself as either mathematically capable or not. What may have started as a lack of understanding, opportunity or experience may become internalized as a personality characteristic and become a block to future learning. In a sense, students have difficulty learning math simply because they think they cannot. You may feel that math is not your cup of tea, but you have to sip it anyway because math is needed at every step of life. 
We cannot live without it. It is a subject that is applied to every field and profession. Now let's move on to the most awaited part of this meeting, which is the presentations by my friends and me about maths in different fields. So stay focused. We will be having some interactive quiz games by the presenters. And also we request all of you to prepare questions to ask our presenters after the assessment of Lisa Ma'am and Devika Ma'am. And before we start, if you have any queries or wish to answer the questions by the presenters, you should only use the chat system. Also, this is an online platform, so technical issues might be faced. So let's begin. We all get entertained when we see various art forms. I invite Srimay Melat of grade 8 from Sharjah to enlighten you about mathematics in dance. Welcome, Srimay. Thank you, Alia. Good afternoon to one and all present here. I am Srimay Melat, studying at Gulf Model School, Dubai, in class 8. We, JP Academia, has joined here with you as a part of our new webinar of conceptual learning, that is mathematics in earth. So now I'm going to tell you something interesting. Math is everywhere. It helps us understand the world. And as you know, math theories can't exist independently without input from the universe. Thus, we'll always find mathematics with some other input. Today, I'm going to connect math with dance. As a part of our discussion, I'll be asking few questions. So you can answer to those questions in the chat. So firstly, I'm going to tell you on mathematics in a dance form. Firstly, I will show you a video and you have to identify which dance form is that. Yes, so can you identify the dance form and you can answer in the chat box. Yes, I got the answer that is bad natya. So do anyone know where that originated from? Yes, it is Tamil Nadu. Bhatnati was the oldest classical dance form that originated in the state of Tamil Nadu. So hope you all know what is Bhatnati and how had that originated from. Now I'm going to tell you on mathematics behind Bhatnati. Looking at a Bhatnati gives a click to the mind each and every step, every muscle movement, the change from one facial expression to another is all controlled mathematically. So let's arm ourselves with pen, paper and logic to explore that journey of mathematical Bharatanatyam. The first and the most important, numbers. When you enter any ongoing dance class in the world, the first thing that catches your attention is the dance teacher's repetitive counting. Is it? Yes. Every step taught in a class are broken into counting intervals to facilitate the learner, grasp the speed and rhythm of the step. At first, the teacher will use numbers like 1, 2, 3, etc. And then the teacher starts to execute balls that we call as 12 cuts to those numbers. So you might be thinking that how are these executed? We'll watch a small clip to find out on that. Yes, so hope you all got some idea on this chalkat and the instrument that is used to play this chalkat is known as Natuvangam. And the next thing, and here comes the main part of mathematics that are numbers. Next thing is measurement. When we all, the main basic thing that comes in Bhatnatyam is positioning the hand. Most of the hand movements start from our chest. There's a calculation precise for that. My dance teacher always says that 10 centimeter away from the chest has always been a guide for me to assume the distance to position my hand. That is like when we catch our hand, the distance between ourselves and the hand should be 10 centimeter. So this is where measurement plays. That is again mathematics. 
Next part, speed and velocity. What do you mean by velocity? Yes, velocity is a speed with given direction. That is how fast something is moving with the direction. So the four twelves of Bernatium are divided into three speeds. That is slow, medium and fast. These three speeds determine the rate at which the feet are moving. And also there is a mathematical progression to move from one speed to another. So when we add direction to this movement of the feet, there comes velocity too. So just to understand how are these determined, we'll watch a video. accordingly that is when the performance started it was in a slow speed is it yes and when it was about to the end or when it proceeded it came out in fast speed so you might have also noticed the change in the direction of the dancer's step so here please speed and velocity next part geometry this is the most interesting part that we can see in mathematics in Bharatanatyam. the content has been taken from ncrd textbook of class 8 that is chapter 4 Practical Geometry and Chapter 10, Visualizing Solid Shapes. We see lots of angles and shapes in the body posture. Is it? Yes. So what are the types of angles that we can see in a regular life? You can answer in chat. Good. Acute angle, right angle, obtuse angle, based on the sides, and we, that is based on the angles. And when we come to triangles based on the sides, it comes as scalene, isocellus, and equilateral. So these are the different triangles that we can see in our life. But we can also see this in mathematics. When we come to different angles in the body posture, here, as I mentioned here, you can see the red lines that is here as a right angle triangle, here as an obtuse angle triangle, and over here as an acute angle triangle. And now when we go to 3D shapes, we see a lot of shapes in the body posture. This is a kushupudi and which is a bit different from Bharatanatyam. In this case, you can see a lot of things used for some different, different methods. So here you can see here a spherical shape, here a cylindrical shape, and here a pyramid where a cone is also to be used. We can also see some cube, cuboid, and other shapes too. So that's where geometry plays. And the next thing is trigonometry. We learned about geometry. Do you think that there's some similarities? Can someone differ differentiate these two terms in chat? Yes. Trigonometry is about angles, relation between their sides, goodness now. Relation between their sides, opposite angles, etc. While geometry is a broader term that deals with points, lines, surface, shapes, etc. So this concept here has taken from NCRT textbook of class 9, that is chapter 6, lines and angles as well as chapter seven, triangle. So next time when you're watching a Bharatanatyam dance performance, you observe the dancer well, and you will see a number of triangular postures in the body. So here comes the trigonometry part. Now when we go deep into it, we have to check the figures. When we come to this picture, here we can see the triangles based on the side. That is, here comes an equilateral triangle, here comes an isosceles triangle, while here comes a a scalene triangle. So these are the three types of triangle that we can see on a figure. So I have asked you what are the types of triangle. So here where here is where triangles come in Bharatanatyam. And when we go to triangles based on its angle, here we can see an obtuse angle triangle. While over here we can see a right angle triangle, and here we can see an acute angle triangle too. So there are several places where we can find angles. These are some of the places where we can find triangles. And now we have discussed many things on Bharatanatyam and mathematics. Can someone tell some of the topics that we have gone through? Yes, we have gone through trigonometry, geometry, then speed, velocity, and several topics in Bharatanatyam. So hope you all got all these concepts. 
and most of the content from here has been taken from NCRT textbook of class 7, 8 and 9. So if you want to know more about mathematics in our daily life, especially in Bharatanatyam, you can go into the site ncrtbooks.prashanlila.com and research more on that. And now let's test our knowledge by having a small quiz. I'll be giving the link in the chat. You can click on that and join. Everyone try giving your real names other than the nicknames. So that's the link and you can click on the link, give your name and start. If you want the code I have also paste. Yes. Nasna came, Pearl came. Good. This depends on your speed. So how fast you are choosing, it depends on that. There might be MCQ as well as choosing. So if you feel some more answers are correct or more answers are up for that, you can give as many answers. Yes, Afia, Raj, Lakshmi, Abhishek, Aisha, Nuha, Rashid, Lakshmi, Sharma. Yes, I can see many over here. Dashak, yes. Within a minute, we'll start the game. Even after I start, you can join. Yes, so we'll start. Five, four, three, two, one. Yes, you can start the game at the tab where you have offered the user. Devi Amis is here. We welcome Deviya, Dr. Deviya from uh, Dalton. She was the last uh, assessor here. Uh, we are also happy to see you again. Oh, hi. Sorry, I was a bit late. Thank you for having me again. Uh, welcome, Devika, once again for the webinar. Welcome, Devika, ma'am. So, and you also made it exciting with your quizzes. Thank you, Srimay. Next, the root of agriculture is mathematics. Let me welcome Saumil of grade seven from India to introduce you to maths in agriculture. Welcome Saumil. And thank you, Alia. Can you see my screen? Yes. 
Uh, good evening, everyone present over here. I am Swamil from Indo India. Today's my topic is maths in agriculture. Now let's know about the stages of agriculture. Land. As we know, as we know, to build something or to grow something, we need land. So in agriculture, land is very important. Quality soil. We need a quality soil to grow quality crops. Seeds. We need good uh, quality seeds for good quality production. Fertilizers. Uh, it help us. It help the plant to give nutrition and minerals. Taking care of the crops. If we didn't take care of the crops, it will not grow properly. Production of crops. If crops are not taken care properly, we will get good production of crops. Counting and storage. After the production of crop, we used to count the fruits and vegetables and we should store it in a warehouse to keep them safe. Distribution in market. The farmers sell their products in, in, in the market to get their profits. Then it reaches at our home. So all these steps require knowledge and skill of mathematics. Now let's see the measurement of agricultural land. Measurement of agricultural land. Land area is measured in hectares or acres. One hectare is equal to 2.5 acres is equal to 10,000 square meters. One acre is equal to 43,560 square foot approximately. So why there is a requirement of measurement of agricultural land? Land measurement is required for plantation of crops such as grapes, bananas, mango, pomegranate, etc. Plant to plant distance and row to row distance are fixed accordingly. Number of plants can be measured per acres. For example, plant to plant distance is equal to 8 foot and row to row distance is equal to 10 foot. Means area required for one plant is equal to 80 square foot is equal to 7.4 square meters. Hence, number of plant per acre is 43,560 square foot divided by 80 square foot is equal to 543 plants per acre. So, why we need this calculation? We need this calculation because the crop or plant should grow at a distance. If they will not grow in proper distance, they will not get proper sunlight, water and fertilizers. Nutrition and Nutrition and fertilizer requirement. Fertilizer requirement for state and country can be calculated through per acre fertilizer dosage multiplied by total acre of crops. For example, 1200 acre of wheat crop multiplied by 50 kg urea per acre is equal to 60,000 kg, kg urea production. So, what do you understand? understand from these calculations yes correct also this calculation helps the government for planning the fertilizer production for the country other areas of agriculture in which mathematics is used mathematical calculations are used in agricultural engineering to make agricultural tools and equipments for example, to calculate the flow rate from a nozzle or sprinkler, nozzle diameter is measured for a specific pressure and flow rate. As you can see in my left hand side diagram, the nozzle diameter is small and flow rate is high. If the nozzle diameter is big, the flow rate is low. Measure Mathematics used to show the growth of crop growth of crop of crop graphically we can use graphical uh, graphical method to show the growth of crop of plant and its stages as we can see uh, as you can see as we can see from the graph where we pour the seed in the soil within a one hour it molecular activity starts cellular activity starts within a one day it takes one week to form the tissues and growth of organs like leaf it takes one month in, in it takes it takes one year to become a whole plant of 10 meters 
mathematics used in crop production in India. As you can see in this picture, in 2018 and estimates of 2018 and 19 and targets of 2020, 19 and 20 of rice, wheat, etc. Mathematics is required for crop mapping work in India. As you can see this map, in in as you can see this map rice is in south india wheat is in middle india and north india jowar is in maharashtra and bajra is in gujarat and rajasthan etc these mathematical studies required to budget to agricultural for the country mathematics is used in climate studies such as moisture humidity temperature rainfall etc now let's play a quiz. I will share your link in the chat box. You can join through this link and you can use code also. Yes, Nishna came. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm starting the game. If you want to join, you can. Yes, Rima came, Raja Lakshmi came. Narayani came. Okay, I'm starting the game. Yes, Rimai came first, then yes, Raja Lakshmi, then yes. Srimi came first, Darsha came first, yes, good. Lakshmi Sharma came first. Srimi also came first now. Darsha came. Yes, very good. All has done. Okay. Narayani, okay. Uh, now I am ending the game. Okay. La Lakshmi is playing. Okay. Now I am ending the game. Third winner is Darshak and second winner is Sri Mai and Sri Mai and first winner is Laj Lakshmi. Thank you. Thank you so much for that marvelous presentation. Now we know why we need mathematics in agriculture. Only then we'll get quality crops. And you two made it interactive with the quizzes. Thank you, Soman. Do you all love sports? I can tell you that without maths, there is no competitions or tournaments. We have Nesna of grade eight from Dubai to tell you the mathematics involved in sports. Welcome Nesna. Thank you, Alia. Good afternoon to one and all present here. 
Again, we, JP Academia, have yet brought you another conceptual learning webinar on Geoliteracy Part 3, Math on Earth. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Nesna Asnajit. I study in Grade 8 in Gulf Model School, Dubai. So, uh, can you please tell me what do you think this picture describes or what do you think it's about? Yes, I'm getting answers. Yes, it's basically about footballs and sports. Okay, what about this picture? Yeah, it is about math. So, as you can see, you can clearly tell the what is the topic. It is mathematics and sports. Mathematics and sports. First, when we think application of mathematics, we think about science and engineering. But math play a huge role in the efficiency of sports. This can be intellectual sports such as bridge, whist, and chess, to sports such as baseball, football, basketball, soccer, and cricket. Mathematics and football. When we first think about football, we think about its humongous court. So in the rules of football, there are many types of areas in the court. There are halves, there are goalposts. So we can observe that there are fully geometrical shapes and angles. For example, here in this picture, we can observe that the court is in a rectangular shape. And then there, there's line segments, uh, corners, angles, goalposts, penalty fields. They all are geometrical shapes and angles. So yet we can connect that to mathematics. And then I have another question for you. Uh, can you tell me what do you think, uh, what do you mean by probability? Can anyone say? Yes, correct, uh, very good. Probability is simply how likely something is about to happen. So the application of probability is used in many, many different types of sports. Here in football, like other sports, probability is used to find the chance of winning and the chance of a person scoring a goal. So if there's a four in five chance of a person scoring a goal, we can check the probability. So again, we can connect that to mathematics. Like mathematics and cricket. In cricket, we can find many, many applications of mathematics. Like we can find fundamentals, probability, velocity, trigonometry, etc. For example, when we hit a ball, we need to find the impact of the ball or how many points we will receive of the ball. So we can calculate the velocity or speed of the ball. So we can understand that by using mathematics. And then over here, again, we can observe angles or more specifically triangles. Here, when we're about to hit a ball, we can find a acute angle triangle and here when we are about to catch a ball we can find another acute angle triangle and here we can find another right angle triangle so this is all trigonometry or more specifically we can say this is all math so again a connection between mathematics and sports and then over here um, can anyone tell me what do you think for what do you observe first when you enter a cricket match or what do you hear more specifically Yes, yes, we hear the analysis of the game. We hear the commentary of the game. So this requires mathematics. This is a date, for example, we all know that the Indian Premier League is going on. And then this is the data analysis for the league in many, many different seasons. So as you can see, there are many different types of bars, lines, graphs. So we can say that it is mathematics. And then here, line graph is used to show the runs over different seasons. And over here, bar graphs are used to determine the factors in each year. So it is, again, math. Now let's discuss the ways math connect with the concept of badminton. Firstly, once again, when we think of badminton, we think of the code. Now, can you tell me what are dimensions or how many dimensions do we live in our day-to-day -day life? Yes, we live in three dimensions, it is height, width, and length. But the most fascinating thing is that badminton game has four dimensions, which is named the height, width, and length of the court and the time of the match. Since they all have measurements, again, we have the application of mathematics. And then here, we can find a picture of a person hitting the cock downwards. So we can term that as, it's known as a smash in badminton. So when we smash the trajectory or the path 
the shuttlecock is traveling in, it can be represented by mathematical functions. For example, ax plus by plus c is equal to zero. We can term that as a trajectory of a smash, as a mathematical function. Again, mathematics. Then over here, I have a picture of a shuttlecock. If you look closely, we can find it is extremely asymmetrical. So we have to look about the measurements lengthwise and across. For example, if it is six centimeter in length, it is also six centimeter across. When we make uh, a shuttlecock, it is according to the gravity and density. So such factors affect the size and mass and smoothness of the cock. So we need mathematics there. We talked about many type, uh, many mathematics in many athletical sports. Now let's talk about mathematics in intellectual sports. Many such sports use mathematics. For example, in a game of chess, we use many different patterns and strategies. We can even use math mid-game to calculate who is winning by applying points to the pieces. For example, if a king is a king is a zero points, and then a Pawn is one point and knight is seven points, etc. And then over here we have carom. In a game of carom, we can find many different types of angles and triangles we use to get the carom inside the hole. So again, that is mathematics. Here are the links and references I used for making uh, taking this information. It is mostly from NCRT Mathematics Textbook Class 8, 9, and 11 from Practical Geometry, Probability, and Relations and Functions. We learned so much about mathematics in sports. Now let's test our knowledge by playing a short quiz. I will share the link in the chat. Is there a link? I will also share the screen. Yes, Rashid and Paul already joined. Many are joining. Ten people are there. Uh, I, uh, I'm going to start the game in one minute. Uh, the It's still open if you still want to join the game. I'm going to start the game. If you want to join, you can also join because it's open. Three, two, one. Yes, now Paul is first, sec uh, second Darshak. They're all coming up. Tight competition is there. First Rashid, second Paul, second Darshak. Yes, now first Rima, second Rashid, third Pearl. Now again, first Rashid, second Rima, third Chandralega. First Rima. As you can see, there's tight competition between players. Now third Darshak, again first Rima, second Rashid, third Darshak. When everyone finishes, I'll end the game. I see that uh, Rashid, Darshak, Lakshmi, Sharma and Chandralega are already finished. Yes, now first Rima, second Rashid, third Darshak. Summer till to finish.
five people are left. <coughs> Yes, now third, Ritika, 60. Yeah, now that everyone's done. Yeah, now uh, I think most of us are done. I'm going to end the game and let's see the results. You can view it in my screen. Third, Ritika, second, Rashid, and first, Simai. Congratulations, guys. Thank you, Nasna. That was a stunning presentation. You made it clear that sports is full of mathematics, both athletic and intellectual sports. And also great job with the quiz. So now you know the maths involved in dance, agriculture and sports. Aren't you excited to know how is maths related to our body? So I'm here to talk about mathematics in human body. Okay. Yes, so from this wide topic, I have taken measurements in human body. Maths in human body is infinity. We won't be able to cover it in all in 10 minutes. So I have chosen some from the infinity of the measurements in human body to speak today. So firstly, I will be starting with few starters, some interesting facts. So your thumb height is the exact same size of your nose. You can check it like this, keep, take your thumb like this, keep it on your nose and find out that is the exact same size. And also that your closed fist is the size of your heart and from your uh, wrist till the elbow is the size of your foot. So all these are measurements that are already present in our body. So what is measurement? The size, length, or amount of something. So I would like to talk about anthropometry. It refers to the measurement of human individual, and it is derived from a Greek word, which means measure. So now let's look into the measurements in our body. Before that, these are the reference materials. NCRT biology class 11 textbook and NCRT science textbook of grade 9. Firstly, RBCs or red blood cells. You all know what it is, but have you noticed the shape of these cells? It is round and biconcave. So biconcave means concave on both the sides. So it will be looking like this. If we take the side view, then we can find this biconcave sh shape. So scientists estimate that the volume of blood in human to be approximately 7% of your body weight. Next is heartbeat. A heart normally beats for 70 to 75 times per minute. The human heart beats more than 3 billion times in an average lifespan. Talking about heart, there is a device named manometer. So it is an instrument used to measure blood pressure so it is also known as blood pressure meter or blood pressure gauge or blood pressure monitor. It is derived from a Greek word meaning beating of the heart. So do you know what is ECG? Uh, can Nesna look the chat for me? Sure, Alia. Yes, uh, yeah. Yes. yeah, it uh, tests the heart, Srima is saying. It is electronic cardiogram. <laughs> Yes, yes, you are right. So an electrocardiogram or ECG records the electrical signs in your heart. It's a common and painless test used to quickly detect heart problems and monitor your heart's health. So you have seen such graphs from, uh, you get it from the hospitals. 
So electrodes are connected to various parts of your body. So the mass involved in this is the horizontal axis of the ECG printout represents the time and the vertical axis represents the amplitude of the voltage. Next is hemoglobin. So what is hemoglobin? You can respond in the chat. Um, Srima is saying it is substance that give color to the blood. Many, many answers yes, are coming. Yes. It's present inside the RBCs. And gives blood red. Yes, yes, I got it. Yes, so you are right. Hemoglobin is a protein found in the RBCs that carries oxygen in your body and gives blood its red color. So a healthy individual have 12 to 16 grams of hemoglobin in every 100 milliliter of blood. Next is our kidney. So an adult each kidney of an adult human measures 10 to 12 centimeter in length, 5 to 7 centimeter in width, 2 to 3 centimeter in thickness with an average weight of 120 to 170 gram. Next is our body weight. About 40 to 45 percent of the body weight of a human adult is contributed by their muscles alone. So there's a calculation named BMI, which I will be speaking in the coming slides. So BMI won't be accurate for the people who have a lot of muscles because as it is mentioned, 40 to 45% of the body weight is only contributed by the muscles itself. So the value of BMI won't be that accurate. Next is scapula. So can you tell what is scapula or where is it present? Uh, thank you, Nesna, I got the chat. Where is scapula or where, where, where is it present? Yes, Srimai has answered present in the shoulders. Yes, you are right. So scapula is a bone which is present in the dorsal part of thorax, which means the backside of the chest. And here we are measuring its shape. It is a triangular shaped bone. It is present between second and seventh rib. Next is our eyeball. The adult human eyeball is nearly spherical in structure, but our iris and pupil is ring shaped. And another fact is that your eyes never stops growing. Next is the shape of epithelial cells. So can anyone say what is epithelial cells or epithelium? Yes, Nesna has answered epithelial cells, tissues line our mouth and organs. Yes. So epithelial uh, tissues line the outer surface of the organs and blood vessels throughout the body, as well as the inner surface of the cavities in many internal organs. So one example that mentioned is you can feel the inner part of your mouth. It is uh, made of epithelial cells. Specifically, it is squamous epithelial cells. It acts like a covering or protective tissue. So we have three epithelial uh, types of epithelial tissues. First one is squamous, which is flattened, and cuboidal, which is cube-like, and columnar, which is cylindrical in shape. Now we come to the BMI or body mass index. So can anyone say what is BMI? Or why do we need it? Yes, Rashid has answered. It helps us in deciding our health. Nesna, BMI helps us check, us check if our weight and height is in proportion. Yes, weight and height is it proportional. Yes, you're right. So BMI is a simple calculation using a person's height and weight. So we need to check BMI to find out if our weight is in healthy proportion to your height. So how to calculate this? It is simple. We just need to divide the weight, which should be in kilograms, by your height in meters square. So let me explain this with an example. Suppose you weigh 70 kg and you're 185 centimeter. So the weight is 70 kg and height is 185 centimeter. But we need the value in meter square. So we have to convert centimeter to meter by dividing it by 100. So we will move two decimal places towards the left and we'll get the value 1.85 meter. Now we just need to divide 70 by 1.85 square and we'll get the value 20.4. So here's the table which we can find out which category we are. So 20.4 is in normal category. So it means that you're healthy. So with BMI, you can find out if you need to make any changes in your routines. Or um, So with the value we got, we can distinguish and find out which category we are. 
so this is why doctors take our weight and height measurement to get the BMI and to check if you are healthy and also decide the dosage for the medicine. So without maths, we cannot calculate BMI. Next is the size of the organs. The largest gland in our body is the liver. The smallest gland is pituitary gland. It is about one centimeter in diameter or the size of a pea. And the three smallest bones in the human body are present in the middle ear, malus, incus, and stapes. Here is stapes, this is incus, and this is malus, out of which stapes is the smallest with three into five millimeter in size. And the longest bone in our body is femur, which is present in the thighs. Lastly, lungs. A lung removes a large amount of carbon dioxide, approximately 80 liters per day. Also, your left lung is about 10% smaller than your right one. So the human body has always been a topic of huge mystery. Even today in the 21st century, we are still unaware of the uses and possibilities of several parts of certain organs within our body. There are angles between our hands, proportions in our height, distance between the organs, etc. So without maths, there is no human body. Today, we have gone through some of the numerical information of our body. Thank you. So I hope that was interesting. So when you open your science textbooks, you see a lot of pictures of solar system. Here we have Rashid Burhan of grade seven from Alain to give you a clear idea on mathematics. Welcome, in Welcome Rashid. Thank you. share my screen are you able to see yes it's coming yes. Good evening, everyone present here. My name is Rashid Burhan and I'm studying at class seven. And today we are gonna talk about math in eclipse. So as a starter, as a starter, define eclipse. Okay, correct. So an eclipse is the result of either completely hidden or partially hidden. The term eclipse is most often used to describe either a solar eclipse when the moon's shadow crosses the Earth's surface or a lunar eclipse when the moon moves into the Earth's shadow. So today we'll be talking about solar eclipse and lunar eclipse and the math behind them. So before we head towards the de definition of solar and lunar eclipse, we have to know one term, which is what is the meaning of umbra and penumbra? Yes, it is the shadows font. Yes, during, uh, during the now, during an eclipse, two shadows are um, formed. The one, first one is inside and the other one is outside. The umbra is shorter as it goes away from the sun and it is the dark center of the eclipse. The penumbra is a, sh a half shadow that occurs when the light source is only partially covered by an object. Let's talk about solar eclipse. A solar eclipse occurs when the Earth is engulfed in the shadow, which is cast by the moon, and hence the moon blocks the sunlight. Now, for the solar eclipse to occur, the sun, moon, and Earth should be aligned in a straight line. So let us uh, look at the diagram to understand better. So as you can see, when the now, as you can see, when the moon comes between the sun, when the moon comes between the sun and the earth, the moon is blocking the rays of the sun from reaching the earth. Hence, the solar eclipse is formed. Lunar eclipse. A lunar eclipse occurs when the moon moves into the earth's shadow. This occurs when the sun, earth, and moon are exactly aligned in a straight line, and it occurs only on a night of a full moon. 
So as you can see in the diagram, the Earth is blocking the rays of the sun from reaching the moon. Hence, the lunar eclipse is occurred. So what math can you see in these two eclipses? Yes, Srime, you're correct. So we can see time, mass, and distance. So let us go through each of them to understand. Time. An eclipse may last as long as 7 minutes and 31 seconds, although most eclipses are usually much shorter. So the maximum time for the eclipse is 7 minutes and 31 seconds. Mass. Mass of sun, moon, and earth. Sun is 1.9 into 10 raised to 30 kg, which means we multiply 1.9 by 10 raised to 30, which is 10 times 30. Now moon. The mass of moon is 7.3 into 10 raised to 22 kg. And earth is 5.9 into 10 raised to 24 kg. Now let's talk about the distance in both lunar and solar eclipses. Distance in lunar eclipse. In lunar eclipse, it depends on the type of eclipse. During a total eclipse of the sun, the moon covers the whole solar disk. And to do this, the sun has to be around 400 times further from the moon than the moon is from the earth. Now distance in solar eclipse. The distance between the sun and earth. The precise distance would depend upon where the earth is in its orbit. At perihelion, the earth is about 146 million kilometers from the sun. Now, distance between the moon, distance between the sun and moon. The distance between the sun and moon is precisely about 149.6 million kilometers. Now, the, let us talk about the last topic, which is why are eclipses rare? In solar eclipse, total solar eclipses are rare at any particular location because totality exists only along a narrow path on the Earth's surface traced by the moon's full shadow or umbra. An eclipse is a natural phenomenon. Now, in lunar eclipse, only slightly more than 50% of the Earth will get to see the lunar eclipse at all due to the fact that you can never see a full moon during the day. Why is that? Because when the moon is completely full, it's on the opposite side of the earth from the sun. Now, we, today we have talk, uh, we, today we talk about the why math in eclipse. So let us play a short quiz to understand better. I'll be posting it in the chat box. You can join using the code. The code is So I'll be starting soon. Okay, let's start the quiz. You can join up. In between the quiz also, you can join.
Okay, so I will end the quiz. Third place is Ritika, second is Srinath Das, and first is Lakshmi. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Rashid, for the tremendous presentation. We got to know about mathematics in eclipses, and also you did a wonderful job with your quiz. Thank you, Rashid. Next, we have a different branch of mathematics. I invite Darshak of grade seven from Dubai to speak about Vedic maths. Welcome, Darshak. Uh, thank you, Alia. Uh, good afternoon to one third person here. Good afternoon to one person here. I am Darshak studying in grade seven in UAE. This is your literacy part three, Max on Earth. My topic is Vedic Max or Vedic Mathematics. So, the father of Vedic Mathematics is Jagat Guru Sri Bharati Krishna Tirthaji. From this picture, you can understand that Vedic Mathematics is, fa is faster than the calculator. In Vedic Mathematics, we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. What is Vedic? Uh, Vedic comes from the Vedas, which means the fountain head of all knowledge. Also because the source of the sutras were found in ancient text of Vedic. According to the Supreme Court of India, they have said that Vedic means time factor. What is Vedic mathematics? Vedic mathematics is a collection of techniques and sutras to solve arithmetic problems in easy and faster way. It too consists of 16 sutras, uh, which means formula or tricks, and 13 sub-sutras. Uh, and it is involved in arithmetic, algebraic, and geometrical questions. Uh, now, how it helps us? Vedic mathematics helps us to reduce silly mistakes, as this method is direct, simple, and keeps the mind of students very alert. It is a powerful tool through which we can enhance the calculation speed. And one can learn Vedic mathematics in his early age as 12 for him or her to perform well in academics and future. Uh, now let's uh, watch a video. Uh, can you see? Yes. Uh, we was discussing about Vedic mathematics. So now let us check the first trick. And uh, first we are taking uh, 95 uh, 5 into 94. Uh, so it in modern mathematics it will be so harder for us to answer. So now let's check an easy way for finding this answer. Now first subtract 100 uh, minus uh, 95. Then equals uh, 5 now 100 minus 94 uh, which equals 6 now we should multiply this 5 and 6 so when we multiply 5 into 6 uh, equals 30 uh, now we should uh, take this uh, 95 then subtract uh, with uh, 6, which equals 89. And now take 94 and subtract uh, with uh, 6. Uh, subtract with 6, 
uh, sorry, 5, which equals uh, 89. So, our answer will be 89, uh, 30. So, now I have taken a calculator. Uh, let us check uh, this 95 into 94 is 89, 30 or not. So, now I have a take. I have taken a calculator and uh, we will multiply 95 multiplied by 94 which equals 89 30 here too it is 18 and 30 uh, thank you so now let's go back to our PPT uh, so, uh, now let's check the advantages of Vedic mathematics the first advantage is speed, accuracy, uh, concept clarity, instant improvement, and higher ranks in Olympics. Uh, this is the this is one of the book uh, of Vedic mathematics. Uh, when we check in Google, we will get many books of uh, Vedic mathematics and external links, uh, tricks too. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Darshak. We got to know about Vedic maths. And you also explained it with a video. It was remarkable. Thank you, Darshak. And that was the end of the presentations. So we discussed about mathematics in dance, agriculture, sports, human body, eclipses, and Vedic maths. Now I invite the guest, our assessor, Mrs. Lisa, to let us know how our webinar went today. And after that, we will be answering the questions you prepared to ask us from the topics presented. So everyone stay back and enjoy. Now I welcome Mrs. Lisa. Hi, this was so amazing. <laughs> I made notes on everybody's talk, so I'm just gonna share a few if that's okay. So I just was thinking about, I think it was Srima who did the dance. And I just thought what an engaging way to involve students in math. Um, and when we try to hook kids, because like you said, sometimes kids think math is not their cup of tea, but then when we do fun things like dancing and we show them how the body moves and that this is an angle, it just makes everybody feel a little more excited about math. <laughs> and I also really liked in the presentation how there were videos and awesome pictures and great visuals. It was just really, really exciting. Um, and then I think it was Samil and he did his on agriculture and I thought, oh my goodness, I'm so glad my son is watching this because we have had a big garden this year at our house. Um, and I loved the graphs and the maps and I think it's so important for people to realize that our food comes from these plantations and farms. And all of bringing in all of that math is so important for us to understand this is a lot of work that goes into figuring out how much rice, how much corn that they can produce. Um, and then Nesna's about sports. Ah, I just was blown away because that is so fascinating. Um, I really appreciated how you broke it into intellectual sports and athletic sports because I think people all the time think about intellectual sports as involving math, but really it's all math, right? And I just thought that was huge. And I think it's a really cool way to encourage others to become involved in all of the STEM, right? All the science, all the technology and all the math, it all has to do with sports, it's huge. Um, and then Aaliyah with the body, I just thought that starting with the fun fact, <laughs> It really just hooked me right away. I was like, ooh, okay. Um, and then I liked that it is real life. Like our body is math. And every time we move or talk and the signals that our brain sends and how fast that happens, that is math. And I don't think we talk about that one enough, right? That everything we're doing with our bodies is math and how important that is for our doctors to take care of us, for us to get stronger, um, and then, um, okay, Rashid, Rashid, I Rashid, I'm pretty sure, um, talked about space and ah, we have been so excited watching the space station this summer and all the cool things that have happened with space. And I just think 
people are already so interested in eclipses and then to think about all of those visuals and how that's math, right? So that's really cool. And kids love stuff like that. And grown-ups who have experienced eclipses their whole lives probably aren't thinking about, wait a minute, <laughs> that's geometry, that's measurement. And there it is, that's huge. And then Dasha talked about Vedic math, which I had never heard of. I had never heard of that before, but we study Greg Tang math here um, and it's very similar. And I thought it was so cool how you did the presentation with the video because I was wondering about some of these tricks and then ah, there you were with your video and I got to see it firsthand. So this just was amazing and I'm so thankful that I got to be a part of it. You guys are rock stars. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, ma'am, for giving your time and assessing each of us perfectly. Now I invite Dr. Devika Ma'am to assess the webinar today. Hi guys, I think uh, Lisa basically covered everything that I wanted to say. <laughs> she was very excited about it. So no, she, uh, yeah, Miss Lisa like said everything that I really wanted to cover and you guys did so well. I think some of the topics were so interesting. Um, uh, time and time again, I feel like uh, Daishak always brings something very different. Last time he brought something, Lisa, you missed it last time, but he did such an amazing presentation last time as well. Um, and this time as well, he's always, he always tries to bring in something completely different that I even I don't know about, like Vedic maths I, didn't, I never knew about. So thank you for always bringing new ideas, Daishak. And um, Shreemay, um, I just like the fact that you use something that you, something that's personal to you in maths, so not just something that, you know, generically but you, something that you you do better than ITM it's something that you enjoy and you showed us how you know you apply maths to something that you do I thought that was really cool that you chose that um and salmon agriculture um I think that's amazing that you chose that because obviously it's so important and people don't I think realize uh, how important it is obviously for us to live so um that was really really good and also do you can I ask you why you chose agriculture out of all the other topics is there something that you liked about it or why you chose it? Uh, Ma'am, can you repeat please? Oh no, I said, do you know, do you, can you tell me why you chose agriculture? Like why did you choose agriculture out of all the other topics? Something that interests uh, you? Ma'am, I chose agriculture because uh, I like agriculture uh, very much and I know something about the agriculture so that I mm -hmm. choose agriculture. Ah, oh, okay, so you enjoy, you enjoy learning about it? Yes. That's really cool. Um, and I think it was Nesna. Nesna, I really liked yours. I, again, like, you don't really think about angles and, uh, you know, trajectories and all these kind of things in sports. So you've really taught us, they taught me something anyway in that. Um, Alia's human body, I really like that. Um, I think something that I can relate to as well. Um, so I really, really enjoyed the human body. Can you tell me like, uh, there was, I like that you ch chose so many different things. Can you maybe tell me why? So, for example, the red blood cells, you said um, that they're biconcave in shape. But do you know why it's so important that it's biconcave in shape? Or anyone? Uh, to move easily through the blood vessels. Yeah. So that's why I, I, know you, I know you guys know it, but just so that everybody else knows as well. So if you had added that in, it would have been like a little bit more like this is why, like these are the shapes that we have. But why is it so important? Um, uh, and same with like moving of your body. So the, the most important thing that I, I suppose that we use in medicine is angles. So when we check a patient or look at a patient, we're looking at angles of movement. So how much can he move? So it, if you want to apply maths to life, you need to know, you need to know the normal. So you need to know this is the normal body so that if something goes wrong, we can see why it's wrong, right? So that's why maths is important. Like the size of an organ, you need to know this is a normal size of organ. So if, if it gets smaller or bigger, then we know there's something wrong, right? So that's why it's important. Like this is the, these are the reasons that you need to know the sizes so that it's not just there for fun, right? It's not just there that we, it, you need to know the normal size so that if something goes wrong with it, we know, okay, it's bad, something's gone wrong. So that's how you apply it. But otherwise it was really good. I really enjoyed that presentation as well. And um, solar clips. I was blown away by that because I have no idea about solar clips and maths and astronomy. So it's a very difficult topic you chose, Rashid, and I really enjoyed it. It was very good. Thank you. Thank you, guys.
thank you, Lisa and uh, Devika, once again from JP Academy. I really very grateful to have both of you as an assessor for our students. They really learn more and this is the insight that you have given from your observations. Thank you once again, uh, both of you for assessing our students. Alia, you know, you can continue. Thank you so much. Once again, thank you, Dr. Devika Ma'am for that amazing assessment. Now it's time for your feedback. So we would love to hear from you. So some of the audience can unmute and give their feedbacks and the rest can post it in the chat so we welcome you all to unmute and even you can ask the questions that you prepared for us so is anyone willing to unmute and give us feedback So everybody should come forward because it is time to share your ideas. It will help uh, that is the academy and at the same time the students to come forward. But I, I think it is a self learned students. We are not doing anything for them. They learn everything themselves. That is why it is a wonder. I think Ms. Uh, Lisa also some experience on the American system because uh, I think they are also giving the students to learn themselves. So I think some instructions also been given by teachers instructors. Uh, the, we are also going so that is uh, really from the first we have divided the whole system of learning the three literacies that is uh, geo literacy then social civics and uh, cultural literacy then the financial literacy uh, then global literacy and uh, the you know, digital literacy so i think without earth we can't live here the, that is the most important thing is that is geo literacy Everything will cover there. If the teacher is part, I think that is uh, Dr. Devi is telling me about, I, I don't know about the solar system. I think everybody must know because the life on Earth is 100% based on the climate and climate change. Even the doctor or an engineer or a, that is a teacher or a mother, every work is, depends on that. We should have a clear idea about that one. That is, we are started from here, from the earth. Uh, next one is also going to think about the global literacy, to know the globe. And it will be a panel discussion. Now our students will come forward. So any any comment from even a child, we will accept it because sometimes we forget to take concert that particular corner. That is why we are so requesting everybody to come forward, to comment. Whatever the comment may be, we can think about the right or wrong after sometimes. Okay? Please come forward. We have some comments, feedback in the chat. Okay. Sana ma'am has sent this really wonderful work by everyone. You guys are getting better with every webinar. Nice topic too. Never really thought about maths in real life. In this detail, awesome work. Thank you, ma'am. Ritika has sent amazing presentations. Thank you. Raj Lakshmi has sent amazing section. Presentation was very nice. Thank you. And oh, uh, Lisa, ma'am, has sent thank you, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. 